Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Chick. This is the wonderful outdoors and open water fishing season is officially upon us. Yes, I know some people have started already. I myself just started two days ago. Day one, took the boat out. Got completely skunked, never found a fish. Tried to film a video, felt like, you know what, the next day, I'm just gonna get back at it. Day two, went and bounced around to some new shore spots, which I've never hit, but I thought maybe I could find something new. Got skunked, day two. We are on day number three. I'm at a spot where I've caught some fish before, so I'm hoping that it's going to prevail. I do have a really good situation here in terms of some clear water dumping into some murky water. And these are about the same style conditions of which I have fished, fished in the past. So we are going to toss some plastics around here, hopefully catch a couple fish for supper type of thing and just get back to the roots. This is where it all started for me, was fishing from shore. I was just a young, a young pup. So it's kind of cool to get back to the basics a little bit. So let's pick up the rod, do a little bit of casting and see if we can catch a couple walleyes or pike. Who knows, you never know. Pick up your trash. People, pick up your trash. Somebody has fished here before and well, they didn't pick up their trash, but we'll take it home. We'll, we'll pick it, we'll take it home. I'm going to use this rope here that somebody has also brought for hopefully uh, a stringer to catch some fish. I'm gonna go down there, but if I catch some fish, I can keep them in the water. So hopefully I can, hopefully I can use this as a stringer. Pick up trash, pick up your trash, people. Nothing's worse than going to a fishing spot and seeing trash everywhere. I really like my conditions. They're good. Your conditions are good. I did forget my net. So if I catch anything this size, she'll be a little bit of a struggle bus right here. Okay. Kalen's quarter ounce spinner jig with a 2.8 ounce uh, Arkansas shad, tickle shad. Let's just kind of snap it along the bottom here nice and slow. Are you kidding me? First cast <laughs> right into the sweet spot where I've caught them lots before. Springtime, slow it down. Nice, get over here. Don't you get over by that tree. Get over here, turn them, turn them, Clayton, turn them. Are you kidding me? Just like that. I've got 10 pound floral, so I'll be able to lift them up to me. First cast. <laughs> well, getting skunk for two days in a row. We pound one first cast. This is a new Kalen's uh, spinner jig, they call it, which I'll uh, do some here a little bit with a 2.8 ounce or 2.8 inch tickle shad. I'm keeping this guy to the water so long because I am keeping him. Yes, success. You're going to be my bottom fish there, buddy. So any other fish I catch is going right on top of you. Okay, can we go two for two? Cast it out, let it sink. I got so excited I didn't show it off to the main camera. We're nice and slow in the springtime. Let it sit, pop it. Let it sit, pop it. Sit, pop it. Okay, well, was it just a fluke? Is that be the only one I caught? The fish was just sitting there? Who knows, but cast number three. And we'll try a couple different techniques here too. We're gonna do a slip bobber a little bit, possibly a Ned, re a Ned rig, but since we finally found fish, we're probably gonna sit here for most of the day since we did go two days in a row without catching anything. We'll tough it out here a little bit. Felt good to catch the first one of the spring though, that's for sure. Where we're going, same spot. Should definitely kind of pitch it around here a little bit. Break off. Yeah. Well, the one bad thing about shore fishing is you can go through a pile of jigs and stuff. That's one down. I uh, left my other jig or the jigs like that in the truck. So I'm just gonna grab another rod and toss it out. 
Just grab another rod for the time being here. I left my other spinner jigs in the truck, which I'll go back for, but we'll throw the tickle shad here. That's uh, on a pendu jig a little bit first. This one, again, I think I'm still throwing a two, no, this one's a 3.8 inch tickle shad with a three eight ounce uh, pendu jig. And maybe that brighter color could be good in this murky water here too, but we'll throw this for a bit and then we'll go back as soon as I break off here or don't catch anything, go get some more of those spinner jigs. Let it sit on the bottom. Gotta fish them slow in the spring, definitely. Okay, well, it's a different bait this time. They're nice fish too. Nice fish. Oh, get out of those trees, buddy. Get out of those trees. Again, we'll just lift him up here. I think if he comes off, he comes off. But if I land him, he's going on the stringer. I guess I can't believe I forgot my net at home. Okay. Fish two. We'll show this one off. This one's on 3.8 ounce tickle shad, but a brighter color right there. Nice. Getting her done. Oh, feels good. After two days of pain, this is, this is awesome. Springtime is such a really, really good time. Two fish from shore still. Fish are in the shallows for the most part. The warmest water you can find is usually the best. If you can find some kind of freshwater inflow type of thing, what's going on here? That's like feeding into a river system, something like that, like a creek that feeds into a river or a creek that feeds into a lake. It's just gonna be a little bit better. It's just bringing fresh water. It's bringing more nutrients, all that fun stuff into the system. It gathers insects, it gathers bait fish. And yeah, these fish will be finished their spawn already, probably about a good mm, two weeks ago. These walleye like to spawn basically as soon as the ice comes off, they'll get into the back tributaries. Obviously some will spawn in lakes too, but usually they go to creeks, tributaries, that type of stuff. So it's good. And uh, we'll talk about like a little bit of how or what what i use to find little spots like this more than more than anything but let's catch another fish and then we'll talk about that and all i'm doing is just casting it out popping it letting it sit again they'll eat it right off of that bottom when it's sitting there pop it let it sink again and i'm giving it a pretty good pop that way when it falls it creates a bunch of disturbance in the bottom gets their attention they'll come over and hopefully investigate and then hopefully bite it as well I do have, I gotta be careful, I've got snagged, I've got a tree that runs right out there, so I'm kinda just reeling it a little bit faster when I get right to that area, but right now that's my, my hot spot. I'll probably try a little bit over here as well as the day goes, but so far over there has definitely been better. That's where, well, that's where my two fish came from. It takes me back to the roots. It's where it all started. It's where my addiction started to fishing is off of shore. I prefer more of an active style of fishing like this compared to a pickerel rig. I do enjoy a bobber at times, but this is my favorite way to fish them is, is active. I feel like a pickerel rig, you just, I don't know, just throwing it out and, and hoping. Obviously there's a time and a place for everything and bottom fishing is definitely a good thing to do at times too, especially depending on the species that you're fishing. But I like an active bait for these walleyes. Don't worry, we'll get you two more friends and that'll be it. Nice, nice. That one spot's been, been the best. Get, our, get around those trees, my friend. Get around those trees. Spinner jig strikes again. Went to a little bit uh, brighter color spinner jig this time, and yeah, nice. Voila, number three of the season. Thanks, buddy. Oh, smells like fish tacos. So this is that new jig I was talking about. This is a quarter ounce Kalen's Google Eye spinner jig. See the blade there on the bottom? Right now they make two sizes, a quarter ounce and a one eighth ounce. One eighth ounce. I'm gonna talk about making a, a bigger size, like a half ounce, three quarter, maybe even an ounce one, just for like the, the heavy rivers. I know at Hecla, these things would be really, really good. And attached to this, I have a 2.8 inch uh, tickle shad. This one's called, this one's electric shad, I believe. And I think the color of this jig 
is a uh, clown don't quote me if it's different i'll flash it here somewhere but that's one of my favorite colors and the, these tickle shads just came out next oh, sorry last year almost said next year they're already out there they came out last year this is a new color though electric shad i like it in a little bit uh murkier waters here so life's good i'm happy we've done it we've caught fish we've got fish for fish tacos like what else is there to do maybe fly the drone a little bit you know life is good this has been my hot spot right here a little bit of a back eddy like from that main river that's, that's flowing this way you see a tree floating there left to right and there's like a calm area there once it gets around that corner and then that fresh water coming in from here just creates like a ultimate ultimate little haven for them right there back eddies and river systems are are a good thing for sure and i just caught that tree again clayton you donkey hope i can get it off oh i know there's a tree right there i can feel it too i've been caught there a few times i might be breaking this one off no oh, he hit that one as it was falling i popped it up and i felt him pick it up as it was dropping back down that little back eddy is money and there's my fourth fish which will be my limit i'll catch a couple more to let them go just to have some fun but we're we accomplished our mission today walleye season is officially upon us oh yeah baby searching for these spring spots i use google earth probably more than anything I'll follow like a, a river system. I'm, I'm in Saskatchewan, there's a few major river systems. Obviously the Coppell River system, the Assiniboia River system, the North Saskatchewan, the South Saskatchewan, uh, the White Mud, I think it's called, or the White River, something like that. And I'll follow the river systems and I'll look for little inlets that are part of like the, or that flow into the river type of thing or into a lake, anything like that. And it's, it's not always the easiest, right? Because you have to find good road access. Sometimes you have to walk a little bit to get into a spot. But make sure before you like go into anything, like don't cross the fence without asking per, for permission. If it looks like it's not a heavily used trail, obviously go ask for permission. Any signs, of course, for sure. No trespassing, stay away. But if there is a no trespassing sign, you can still knock on a, a farmer's door that's close there and ask them nicely. You'd be surprised. A lot of them, as long as they know who's down there in the river or fishing, that they're more than likely to let you go. They're just sick of picking up trash in their in their neighborhood in their area that on their land that type of thing so just ask ask for ask for permission be respectful if you do see trash pick it up and yeah most importantly just have some fun and you could ask that farmer too like you know do you want if i catch a couple do you want me to bring you a couple right like you could you could give him a couple fish to eat type of thing and yeah life's good Nice, 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 nice. Okay. This is good. I think what I'm going to do after this fish, though, whether I land it or whether or not, I think I'm going to go for a little bit of a cruise and check some new areas. I got my my legal limit down there to take home already. So this is, this one's going back. And, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. We'll show them off quick and get them back. Gorgeous specimen right there very very good start i'm gonna go still check a couple more areas and maybe there'll be more to this video yet but you get to go right by your buddies and you gotta go free and they're gonna be like take me with you haha -ha. fish tacos well as you can see i'm not at the lake anymore i'm actually in the yard about to cook up those walleyes that i caught i'm going to do two different kinds that's why i got two bags Catch and Cook has a new lemon pepper out called Citrus Kick, brand new. So we're gonna play with that, with actually, with Franks and flour. I used to do a lot of this with lemon pepper and Franks and then add the flour. So I'll show you how I do all that. But now we're gonna try their seasoning and then I'm gonna use a beer batter Catch and Cook, but I'm not going to use any beer batter. I'm actually gonna use it as a dry seasoning, which you can do that too. So I'm, I'm excited, I'm hungry. I'm probably gonna, as you can see, make up some fish taco stuff, I believe. I'm going to feed my parents as well uh, some walleye later today. So I'll cook it up for them and take it to them. Catch and cook, like I said, right here, citrus kick. 
You can get this in the description below and now you can actually put some bundles together on their website and kind of make your own like seasonings and coatings whatever you want and like I believe they have like a discounted package if you order so many you get discounts type of thing so the oil should be pretty much hot enough so let's get going. I've done this lots in the past but I've never used the new citrus kick stuff here. Frank's right there and a lot of lemon pepper. Not like a lot, a lot, but enough. Mix that all together. And then instead, you could use obviously like original catch and cook or spicy catch and cook, but I've always done this mixture with flour. So that's what we're gonna do today. This is so good like this. That oil is probably hot enough, so we gotta go quick here. And now I'm going to dump in, so you can see all this fish is coated with lemon pepper and franks. And I'm gonna dump in a fair amount of flour. You don't want too little because you want that all that fish to get coated. If you don't use enough flour, you'll end up with like a, a goopy, a goopy, goopy mess. I still got to get a plate out here, it looks like, to put some fish in. But I'm rushing here because that oil is going to be getting hot, I think. And hot oil, too hot, is never good because you'll burn your fish. Let's see here. If it's too hot, we can pull the pan off. No, I think we're okay. So we'll load her up pretty good here. Those four walleye that I caught definitely turned into a pretty big chunk of fish here. I like it. They're all about uh, 17 to 19 inches. So while that one's cooking, we're going to get the second one going here. I use Frank so much as a binder. It'll just like, it'll get that coating to stick really, really nice to your fish. You don't need to use too much. You can use water as well. You can use an egg wash. It's a bunch of different things. But this is a very, very simple recipe today. Like I said, you don't have to use beer batter, or you don't have to use beer with this batter. You can use uh, you can use it as a dry batter. Use a fair bit. Mix that around. Yeah. Now have that ready to go because that other one's almost already finished. Fish does not take long to cook. So this is what I'm going to use here to make my fish tacos. This is a mango peach uh, salsa habanero from Costco. Got a Tex-Mex cheese here. And we got some tortillas, some soft shell. And then this is really, really good. Sweet with heat. President's choice. Really, really good. That's it's very basic. I'm not doing any peppers or anything like that today. Uh, sweet chili sauce you can add on there. I'm not putting any on mine, but that is another good thing to put on your fish as well. Memories of Thailand. That's going to be my little, my mixture. Yum, yum. First batch is ready. Pulling out the smaller pieces first, just to give the thicker pieces a little bit more time. This is a guide recipe right here. Lemon pepper with Frank's, the classic. Fish doesn't take a long time to cook, but what do you want to end up here? I'll even use the thickest piece. It's like a nice little flaky inside. See how it kind of flakes apart in there? If it's not flaking apart, that means it's not finished, but you can also dry it out really heavily too. So you don't want to overcook fish. There's that fine line for sure. First plate of fish looks money. We're going to give it some extra citrus kick here. Oh yeah. Love lemon pepper on fish. I'm so glad they came out with lemon pepper. So good. And now my second batch is going to go in here. This is the catch and cook with the beer batter. That's actually not with beer. Works really good as a dry, a dry rub too. Pulling out the second batch now. Smaller pieces first again. Catch and cook is primarily a darker batter, you'll notice. So you have to, don't, don't let it fool you because it's like, let it get dark enough, you know, so it means that it's like cooked all the way through. A lot of times you can tell by like the darkness. I know very well from flour how dark it gets, meaning that it's basically cooked. This stuff you just have to watch It'll get dark, you just have to cook it just a little bit longer because like I said, it's a darker batter. But this is a beer batter right here and this will be really crispy, crunchy. 
Crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Just give my bigger pieces. Last, last kick of the cat, basically. They're probably cooked. We're just making sure, making for sure, for sure. Cool, and there you have it. Two different styles of fish. I'm gonna pull a couple pieces on this plate and take the rest inside to keep warm and we'll make up a fish taco. Well, as simple as it gets for a fish taco there. I haven't put any salsa on yet because I need to get a spoon. I may put some on there. I think my first one though, I'm not gonna have any salsa. Just tortilla shell, cheese, fish, and the sweet and heat right there. We're gonna have a basic one there so we just get to enjoy more of the fish. I'll probably have some of the fish just by itself yet later too. And yeah, life's good. Finally, walleye feed, it's been a little bit. I obviously never put any videos in April and now we're gonna be pumping them out pretty heavy into May, June, July. And yeah, we're gonna go on adventure this summer. We're gonna film the adventures and yeah, it's gonna go have fun. So thank you so much for watching this short little video. It's always appreciated. We're almost, we're, we're getting close to 100,000. We're at like 89,000 subscribers. So let's keep pushing them up. I appreciate everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, get outside.